Okay, we'll just give the bees a little bit of puff of smoke, which will calm them down. They'll actually go into the hive and have a little feed of honey, fill their stomachs up, and they'll be easier to, to work. So we just give them a bit of smoke, and after about a minute, that hive is ready to open, and you can work the hive without any problem at all. So off comes the lid, and before they get too carried away, we'll take the, put a bit of smoke under there as well. On the top of the beehive, just under the lid, we have a thing called a propolis mat. Now this propolis is what the bees collect, um, it's a sap from the trees or, or um, you know, the, like the pine trees or, or, or any flower that's busted open, they, they collect that and we put that on a mat and collect that. Now I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a little while, but we'll go down into this first box here and we'll see if the bees have been doing what they meant to be doing. Very warm in here, I can feel the heat coming out of it. They're, they're keeping the hive at about 34 degrees and it is very warm. I can actually feel the heat coming out there. It's hotter than it is outside. They constantly keep their hive at that temperature. Now there is a lovely frame of very, very fresh Manuka honey coming in. You see it all dripping. This is very fresh. This has just come in the last two days. Couldn't be any richer. Okay, I'll pull out another frame and I'll show you where the bees have just started to build out the comb. Now this is how the comb started when we put it in, in the beehive. Just the plastic and it was been primed with a plastic with a with a wax coating. If I turn that over, this is what the bees have done in the last couple of days. They've used nectar, converted that into beeswax and glands in the backs of their body, and they've built the wax out and put honey in those little cells. And here it is lovely and fresh. Again, that has only just happened in the last two days. Now these bees are so busy working that doesn't matter what I do, I can actually work these bees with no gloves, not likely to sting. They're too busy building, building honeycomb. We just keep the smoke going over the hive just to keep the bees quiet. And here again is some beautiful manuka honey like you'll never ever see again probably, it's so fresh. What the bees do is once they've filled that up and it's ready, it's, they've finished with it, they will then cover the top of the cell with a wax capping to keep, keep it nice and clean. And that's this nice little dry capping here. So when that, this frame is two thirds what we call capped, we know that we can harvest that frame of honey. If it's not hasn't got two thirds covering of beeswax, we know that it's not ripe enough to take. This, high, this hole here will actually be repaired, the bees will actually repair this, this little hole that I've just cut within the next 24 hours. So we've done no damage there, we've just, except I wouldn't mind tasting it. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this honey super off, which has probably got about 15k of honey in it at this present time and you see under that honey super was a what we call a queen excluder the idea of this queen excluder is to make sure that mum lays all her eggs and keeps her babies down under the honey supers so no honey that is taken off the hive goes into the factory we can't have any contamination from larvae so on each of the hives we have what we call as a queen excluder that goes down there, we put that on, and under here will be mum and all her babies. I will just slowly... shake a few bees off and I'll show you 
we mum has her little brood. This is a frame of baby bees and larvae. You, these little ones here, these capsules, are bees emerging. They're ready to, to, to emerge. Now there's one cell here that if we just keep the camera on there long enough, we'll actually see it break out. The bee will pop out and it's ready to hatch. We'll just give it a little bit of a hand. And that bee will come out in a... In a One new baby bee. You can see the nectar that's coming in, this very glassy, watery stuff. Well, what happens is the bees fill... These little cells would have had baby bees in them once. What the, what the bees do now is fill them up with nectar and they slowly push the queen down, which reduces the size of the nest going into autumn. So the more honey that comes in, the more that, that the queen is confined to the bottom box. So it gives her a lot less room to lay eggs. Again, there's a big frame of brood and a bit of honey on the outside. Now what the, what the bee does, the nest, they lay the eggs in the centre of the frame. Around the edge of the brood nest, they actually place the pollen, which is very, very rich in protein. It's the dust that you see formed on the top of the flower. That is always on the very outside of their nest, of their, of their brood nest. On the outer ring of that, again, you'll see their stores. So they put eggs and their babies, pollen, and then honey. This particular hive would have a population of around about 50 to 60,000 bees. So I'll place this hive back together. And we will then give them a little smoke, make sure they all go down. We will put the queen excluder back over. And our bees will be very happy and carry on filling up that box. So we'll put the top box back on. Just make sure it's nice and sealed. And then on top of that, we'll go back to putting the propolis mat on. Now the propolis I talked about before is the substance they get off the, the sap from the trees and it looks like, like this stuff here on the end of the hive. I'll just scrape a bit off. So we come over here and that is beautiful, rich propolis that the bees have brought in from the trees. We'll send, we'll send this up to Manuka Health and they will clean this propolis up and it will come back in the form, well many forms, but one of the forms will be in propolis tablets for people to take. I take them, that's why I'm so young. And this is what it looks like to take in the human form. Now it's so strong an antibiotic that it's, you cannot take too many. You've got to take just what is, is said on the jar. Um, it's very strong. Very powerful for, the, for sore throats, uh, for cleaning the, clearing the blood supply. You can, you can actually, a beekeepers eat it like it, but you can only eat a very, very small amount because it's so strong. You saw what I was showing you before in the beehive with the bees wax on the outside of the bees frame. Well, all that is not wasted. In the extracting process, it is melted down and rendered into these blocks, sent away and made into things like cosmetics, lip balm, um, all sorts of products that take beeswax. So no product from the beehive is wasted. It is all used. It takes the bee 13 kilograms of honey actual honey to make one kilogram in weight of beeswax. So we um, protect every bit of beeswax we can.